Hello. Today I'll preview a new feature that's coming to JStream. Um, over the last couple of releases, we've uh, really gone deep on making our wildcard support uh, full featured and stable and fast. One of the major announcements we added is a new limit that allows you to track the or to confine the message limits in a stream not by the entire stream but on the number of messages in a particular subject that means if you send readings or metrics or values or something like this from 100 devices into a stream each on a unique subject you can say keep 100 um, historical values per device rather than keep a thousand messages in total in the stream this is really great for for making sure that busy workers doesn't push out idle workers on the stream. Turns out that's a, that's a major enabling feature for things like key value stores, where if you store every key as a subject and the value as values in the stream, you, you have a KV store. So we're busy building out such a feature on JStream. At the moment, it's an experimental feature. Um, we have CLI support for this. There's an experimental Go package for this. And there's um, currently an uh, almost complete build of this in the JavaScript um, libraries. So let's have a look at this. So we can create a new bucket. Um, we just call it CFG at the moment. Um, we can say we want to replicate the data three times. So it's a, you know, normal JStream reliability stuff. We can say we want to put this cluster in London, for instance. This will be the default here. Um, we can say we want to keep five historical values for every key. So if you make a mistake, you can just go back and you can see your previous values and maybe um, you know, put an old value back. Um, and there's a couple of other things as well. You can, for instance, automatically expire keys from a bucket if they have not been used, you know, if they've just, after a certain period, they'll be removed from the bucket, regardless of use or access. Um, so we'll add our, our key, our CFG bucket here. We can see there's a bucket, um, history is kept, there's no limits applied to it and currently there's no values in it. Um, normal, normal basic things here, we can go put a value into our CFG bucket, um, username Bob, and it's there. We can put um, other values in here. Uh, we can put in workers, then, and it's all just string, 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 right? Um, this can be fairly easily gotten, so if we did that, we get the value. And we can see also, you know, a little bit of uh, metadata there. Uh, if we just want to get the value 10, do like that, so you can say workers equals, you know, really nice for that. And easy for, easy for. Huh. Workers. Easy for shell scripts and so forth. You know, as we're putting different values into these keys, we'll change it to 11, and then we'll change it out to 8. Um, we can say what's the history for this for this uh, particular key, and we can see how our configuration has changed over time. The KB supports watchers, so I can say watch, um, watch CFG, so we'll watch the entire bucket for all rights. Um, you know, as soon as I write something, you will see the the write happen there. And we can even constrict it to or limit it just down to one, um, you know, one key. I showed you the history for a particular value. That's all there, um, and you know, it, it, it's not really much more complex than that. Um, if we look at the other options here, we've got put, we've got get. We can delete a key. So if I delete a key. Um, we can delete the key, and what you see is we're, we're, we're actually writing a delete operation into the history. See there. Rather than deleting the data, this means, so if you accidentally delete the data, uh, you can go back and see your history um, based, on the, based on the values there. However, if you try to get this, um, get this particular key, you'll now get an error message saying unknown key, even though the history is still there. Um, we can we can dump it so you know that's just as a kind of a kind of a quick um, look into what all the values are. Um, of course, I've deleted the um, you know, the, the workers key, so you won't see it there. 
Um, this is um, basically for encoded values, and you, know, you get some metadata and sequences and things. Um, ultimately, we can we can we can purge the entire bucket and we can remove the entire bucket. So this is like I said, you know, not super um, full featured, massive, all sing, all dancing KV, but for many use cases, this is going to be fine. KV tend to be very read. Um, read heavy operations, so you'll write a few times, but very often write. We've added APIs to make writes in this kind of scenario very fast. Um, and uh, there's some things going that we that we have planned and we're thinking about. You know, so if we did, for instance, um, NATS KV status CG, we'll see this one's hosted in London now. You may have workers running in San Francisco or New York and other clusters in the supercluster. And what we support is taking the backing store, which in this case is a stream called KVCFG, and replicating that to San Francisco and replicating it to New York in real time. So anytime that a, a write happens in London, San Francisco and New York is immediately up to date. When you start a worker in, in San Francisco or New York who wants to access a KV, they can access the read replica near to them. And if they know they're only ever going to read, they, they never have to communicate to London. They simply read the values out there and it's, you know, it's real time enough. Um, if you're going to do reads and writes, um, obviously we, we're going to write down to, in this case, London, replication will happen and then you read out from San Francisco. Um, there's a little bit of delay of course there, but in generally it's, um, you know, it's uh, sufficient for the use case. We support things like caches. So for instance, in the Go client, we have a in-memory cache for the bucket. And so as it starts, it will start a watcher on the bucket, it will read the entire bucket in, get the consistent view, and then mark itself as ready, and any reads from this bucket will be you know, in memory, basically, immediately. Any writes to the bucket will invalidate the cache for that key, right into, into JStream, and then the next read will be a cache miss, and it will get the message from JStream rapidly. Or, and this will also, what most likely will happen, is the write will invalidate the cache, write will happen, the watcher will send the message back to the um, cache, and before you need it even, your cache will already be up to date. Um, we have concepts of encoders and decoders, so you can encrypt your keys and your values to have you know completely end-to-end -end, um, zero trust storage, and you know, really um, it's a very powerful concept. Now we're developing a few things with this capability. We'll be tweaking the API a little bit. Um, we'll be maybe changing the model a little bit. Um, but very soon we will have stabilized what we're trying to build and you'll see support for this landing in our other clients, Go, Java, .NET, and, and so forth. So I will, I've put some links on the, on this, on the video here. Um, the one is called an ADR. This is our architectural design records. And so that is where we design these kinds of features and document the behaviors and document how this will interact with JStream underneath. So, um, read that one for the full background. CLI, of course, will support this on the next release. There's a custom Go, there's a you know, preview Go package already for interacting with this. And you know, as I said, more to follow. Um, we would love to hear your feedback on this. We're very excited about what we can do with this. Um, and really we're thinking a little bit out the box in terms of what we can do with JStream. There's two other interesting things um, coming up. Um, we can do leader elections of JStream, which is a very powerful feature, and um, we can do things like um, concurrency control, saying if you have a fleet of, 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 of processes that needs to run, but you have constrained resources, you can say out of a thousand possible um, instances that needs to run, only 10 at a time are allowed to run. These are capabilities that's also in JStream at the moment. Um, that's it for today. It's only the KV that we're gonna we're gonna show, and you know we value your feedback. Please reach out to us. Thank you very much.